Flexor digitorum superficialis. The flexor digitorum superficialis is a superficial digit flexor. It covers the radius and the anna. It covers the profundus. The carpal tunnel area contains nine flexor tendons. Four of them are for the flexor digitorum superficialis. The flexor digitorum superficialis for the ring and the middle fingers lies volar to the index and the small fingers. The flexor digitorum superficialis tendon of the fifth finger may not be present in all individuals. Origin Two heads, a humeral under head and radial head. The humeral under head arises from the medial epicondyle, the common flexor origin and that is the humeral part. From the medial side of the coronoid process, that's the annular part. The radial head arises from the oblique upper third of the anterior border of the radius. It's called anterior oblique line. The muscle divides into four tendons to the medial four fingers. The muscle separates and creates a tunnel for the profundus to go through. At the proximal third of the proximal pharynx, the flexor digitorum superficialis is split to pass around the profundus. The two slips of the superficialis rotate 180 degrees around the profundus. Then the two slips reunite deep to the profundus in a region known as Camper's chiasma, dorsal to the flexor digitorum profundus. Then they insert into the radial and the ulnar aspect of the proximal half of the middle pharynx. Insertion by four tendons into the base of the middle phalanges of fingers 2 to 5. Action. It flexes the PIP and MCP joints 2 to 5 digits. How about the nerve supply? The median nerve. How about the relationship to the median nerve? After the median nerve passes between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle, it passes deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle, and it appears superficial approximately two inches from the wrist joint. In the proximal third of the forearm, the ulnar artery is located between the flexor digitorum superficialis and the profundus. How do you test for the flexor digitorum superficialis? The patient will attempt to flex the involved finger at the PIP joint with or without resistance while the remaining three fingers are held fully extended in order to eliminate the function of the flexor digitorum profundus. How about testing for the flexor digitorum profundus? You will find the finger lies in a slight extension relative to the other fingers. patient will have no active flexion of the DIP joint. You will extend all the joints of the finger except the DIP and then you will ask the patient to flex the DIP. 
If the patient can flex the DIP, then the profundus is intact. The indication for reimplantation of a digit involves injury distal to the insertion of the flexor digitorum superficialis, means zone 1. One of the contraindications to reimplantation of a digit is a single digit proximal to the flexor digitorum superficialis insertion, zone 2. You can see in this diagram the different flexor tendon injury zones. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.